this tutorial, this is going to be an advanced tutorial. It's about adding captions to photos. So those are just file bits of file information that become visible to the viewer that are related to the images themselves. And you'll get the idea when we do this demo here. So I'm going to go to File and Open in Chapter 5, Folder 17, and I'm going to open up this blank sheet of paper right here. And the way you deal with captions, there is a feature under Object, oh no, Type, sorry. Is it type or object? Ah, object menu. That's right, because we're putting type in an object. We're putting it in a text frame. So it's object menu, captions, and caption setup. Now, captions are little bits of information like uh, photography by Associated Press and things like that. Little elements related to the image. So you have a field here. You could put text before your statement. You can add a bullet character or copyright symbol before your statement, whatever you want. There's tons of information you can add before your text. The text for your little statement can be based on any of this information that's related to your Photoshop file that you're bringing in or your Illustrator file for that matter. And you can add text after as well, like ellipses, dot, dot, dot. Uh, you can add more bits of information or not. You want your captions below your image. And I'm going to keep it at this setting right here. These are all the just the defaults. And I'll click OK. I'm not going to group it with the image yet. I'll click OK. So now I want to add some images. But before I do, I'm going to add one of them because I want to show you the file information. So I'm going to hit Command D for a document. Chapter 5, folder 17. Here's my photos. And I'm just going to grab these three. Click open. And I don't care how big they are right now. I'm just going to click and drag and drag and drag. Okay. These are all Photoshop files. So if I click once on it, hold Option and double click, I bring it back into Photoshop. So what I did to prep this file is I went to File Menu and File Info. And I added a document title, Beachhead, he's a ranger. Okay, I'll close that up, click. Let's see if I can do this. Click and Shift click, now Option double click. No, nope, it only, okay, it only opens up the one file. So that's fine. File and file info. This guy's name is Duke. He's a first sergeant. Or you could do an author or any other bit of information, copyright notice, whatever. So I just added a little title information. Click, option, double click. This guy is Flint. And he's a warrant officer. So, okay, I got file information for the titles of these files. So I did that on all of them. I'm going to select those and delete. Hit Command D again, and I have nine photos. So, again, when I select multiple ones, I click open, click and drag. And as I hold down the mouse, I'm going to hit the up arrow for three rows and the right arrow for three columns. There's my photos right there. Okay. Now what I want to do is add static captions or not static, live captions. I'm going to select all of these and go to object menu, captions, generate live caption. And there we go. Okay, that is just way too crowded here. So I'm going to select it all. Hold my bottom corner for a second. Now I hold my space bar. We'll just kind of pull these apart. Notice as soon as I pull apart the uh, text, it breaks the link. Okay, so let's do this again. Command D. I grab all nine. Click and drag, and now I hit the up arrow 
for three rows, the right arrow for three columns, but they're too close together. So remember, when I'm using this gridify method, I can hold down my command key and now I start hitting, whoops, I don't want that. Hold down command, start hitting the up arrow so I can add more space between these photos. Let's hit the right arrow, kind of separate them a little more, hit the up arrow a little more. There we go. All right, now I got a little more room in between for our captions. So I'm gonna select them, object, captions, generate a live caption, and I'll hit W. So now, this information was the file information, the metadata information for this Photoshop file. Okay, the reason why these work, and I'll hit W again, is because they have to hit each other. See, if I select these two, there's a little bit of an overlap. The text frame has to at least connect or overlap the picture in order to read that code information. See, if I click and drag the text and break it, no intersecting link. Can't find the information. So let me go to edit and undo that. Okay, they're all connecting. So that is one way to deal with your captions. If I selected everything and tried to pull it apart, break the links, you know, like that, it's not gonna work. So let me take these three. I'm gonna hold Shift and Option. We'll drag a copy over here. And I wanna put an outline around these. So I'm gonna hit W. I wanna add a stroke. But the problem is, if I selected all of this and I come up here to the stroke, I'm gonna start hitting the up arrow. See if it'll do it, nope won't do it so let's click on the stroke let's make it black there we go and now when I add a stroke not only does it apply to the photo but the stroke was so thick it choked out my type and now I can't read the type so I'm gonna select all of this click on the stroke and say none there's my text because the spacing is so tight here that doesn't really work very well Okay, so let's take these and delete them. Let's look back on these images. Let's see if we can edit these as they are. So I'm gonna select the whole thing, object, captions, let's see captions setup, and see if I can do that by increasing the amount of space. Nope, okay. So once you do your captions, you're kind of done. If you don't like them, you go in and delete them. So I'll go right across the bottom of these little text frames right here, delete all those, and I gotta do it again. So I select all nine, object, captions, caption setup, and I want them just a little bit further away. Okay, before they were like a 0.125, we'll go a little bit more. Let's try a quarter of an inch, Let's see what we get object, captions, generate live caption. Okay, whoa, 0.25 is way too far away. Edit and undo, that's ridiculous. Object, caption, caption setup. I wish they had a preview here, but you don't. So a lot of this is guesswork. I'll just go 0.125, okay. Object, captions, generate live caption. That looks a little better. Okay, still have a little bit more room below, so I know these words are connected to these characters. And here's another trick. If I select these, okay, hold shift and option, drag a copy. Well, now I just realized something as I'm reading this. Let's delete that. This is ridiculous. Why would I want this guy to say beachheadportrait.psd? I got the wrong information for my captions. This is stupid, so I'm gonna have to do it again. Ugh. Select and delete, select and delete, select and delete. I wanted the title, so I'm gonna select all of those. Object, captions, 
caption setup. The metadata is not the name of the file. I want it to be the title that I typed in on the file info in Photoshop. There we go. Now when I go to Object, Captions, Generate a Live Caption, that's what I need. Beachhead, he's a ranger. Gung-ho, he's a marine. Scarlet, she's intelligence. Shipwreck is a sailor. So you get the idea. I'm using the document title information that I had to type out. So now if I select these three, hold shift and option and drag a copy, I want to show you what's going to happen here. And this is a really cool trick. Let's say I move these over a little bit, but I want the photos to kind of be up and a little bit away from these. So I'm gonna click, shift click, shift click, and just move those up and over to the right a little bit. Okay, the text frame is not intersecting with the box, so now it can't find that file information. But I do like how the text kind of sticks out, like it got a little hanging uh, drop cap here, kind of hanging accent here. But I can't read the file information now. So here's an awesome trick. This is somehow linked with this. But when I break that link, the way I can re-establish the link is select them both, object and group. And just by applying a group, it fixes the connection between those two. Select command G, select command G. Cool, now I've got them kind of offset. But what I also want to do is change the outline, the corners of this photo. Now, when I click here, the problem is if I wanted an outline, I could click on the stroke, change the stroke to black. But again, it's going to apply to everything. That's going to kill my type. I only want it on the photo, not both. So I'll click none. Here's the trick. If I tried to click on this photo, it selects the photo and the text. I made a group. So here's how you deal with an object within a group. I click once, it selects the entire group, but now I double click and now I have isolated that object within that group. So I'll add a stroke right up here, click the corner widget, and drag it in a little bit. There we go. Click, it's a whole group. Double click, now I have my photo. We'll add a stroke right here. And let's set the stroke, there we go, black. Also make that two. Click the corner widget and I'll drag that in till that guide, little gray box says half an inch. Click, that's a group. Double click to isolate an object in the group. I'll add a black stroke at a weight of two. Click the corner widget and drag that over to 0.5. And there we go. Got a totally different look. They're still grouped. I can still move that around. But once I hit Command G again to ungroup, let's see if that does it. Oops, Command Shift G to ungroup, you got problems, okay? So if you are breaking the link between a caption and the object, select them both and Command G, and that will re-establish the caption link, okay? If you decide this is not the right information, you would have to delete those and do another caption setup. Instead of taking the document title, you could do the document author, or copyright 2020 Chris Nielsen or whatever you wanted to do. But that's how you deal with captions in InDesign. I'll delete these one more time. They're separate. Okay, select your photos. It all has to be set up prior. So I set up file information before I brought these photos into InDesign. That's the clue right there. Object, captions, caption setup. I want it to be based off of the title. 
or just to see what this has let's just see if there's a date I know I saw that in here somewhere uh, place date no not when I placed it in here do, 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 do. see ah, capture date all right we'll do that let's see what we get what we get 0.25 below the image I like that now let's see what we get if I go to object captions generate a live caption okay no data from the link because I never typed in that information from the file info so unless unless you type that information in you're not gonna have it object captions caption setup instead of a captured date let's go with some information that is typically captured in here like um, let's see the color space let's try that object captions generate live caption there you go they're all RGB images great okay so some of the file information is automatic some of it you have to type in like document titles or whatnot but that is how you deal with captions and the last thing I wanted to show you I'll go to edit and undo. I'll go to object, captions, caption setup, and let's go back to this title one more time here. Okay, object menu, captions, generate a live caption. Cool, I like that, but you know what? Now that I look at this design, I wish those titles ran up the sides of the image, not across the bottom. But again, when I take these text frames and I move them, I'm breaking the link. So we'll undo that. So here's the trick. I'm going to hold shift, select these captions, hold shift, select those captions. And now I can go to object menu, captions, convert to static, which basically breaks the link and keeps the type as it is. So no matter where I put these, it's like I type them out myself. Okay, so now I can arrange or I can put them all on top of the photos, like right there. I can hit Command T for type. Let's change all of these to a bold font. Okay, that font was too big. So let's go back, that's Minion Pro. Let's see if we can do something that's more of a sans serif, like a Arial. Let's do Impact, nope. Arial Black. Okay, we'll make the fonts a little smaller here. And now I could just go to my swatches, click on the fill, and fill them all white. But why didn't that work? Because I forgot I'm on the container formatting none for the container I want the T for type now I can set them to white and there we go okay so you have so many possibilities here in Adobe InDesign these are captions really cool self-generated information for you this was a long uh, demo so review it there's a lot of information having to do with captions I'm not a huge fan of those because there's a lot of prep work you got to do on your images before where I get a little lazy. I would just <laughs> click and drag a box and type it in. But that's an advanced feature if you ever have to take advantage of that. It's just keep in mind you got to do a lot of prep work ahead of time. But that is captions here in InDesign.